So hello and well, welcome to this session of the our webinar, which will cover the crane safety with the FEA calculation. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you can see my screen or hear me. If so, please uh, give me a message in the chat box. So then I will understand that everything is go smoothly. Maybe we will wait several seconds in order to everybody can join and start the presentation. Okay, good. I see that you, you heard me well and presentation is uh, can be seen on your screen. So let's proceed. Uh, first of all, uh, maybe I introduce myself. My name is Roman Kondro. I'm project engineer at the SDC Verifier. And uh, today we are covering the uh, topics which related to the verifications of the crane safety based on the FEA calculations. Uh, this is like uh, main agenda uh, which we would like to walk through the, the first one this is introduction about the company itself how it's funded and so on next one is the engineering services problem solving with the sdc verifier software uh, next uh, next one is recognition of the structural members uh, uh, belt classifications and load combinations uh, based on the ENC 2001 standard. Uh, the ENC 2001 standard itself, how to uh, predefine the characteristics uh, in the SDC verifier. And then we, I will present you that all these steps uh, of the verifications can be easily stored and generate in our report designer. And at the end, the, the main goal of the SDC verifier itself so that, uh, uh, the, the, that all these steps, intermediate steps, can be omitted and uh, uh, small modifications do not make any uh, changes in your uh, model. Um, the, the next topic is SDC SAM, uh, which allows us uh, to track collect and uh, uh, like follow the structure during the sun uh, during this uh, operation time and uh, uh, support the structure uh, check the inspections uh, check the uh, potential problems and uh, track the inspection uh, of the asset the last one is the conclusion so we are going to summarize everything and uh, at the end of the discussions if you will have any questions you can uh, interrupt me uh, 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 sorry at the end of the discussion you can uh, chat the your question in the chat box and i will uh, answer them as well so let's start from the small introduction of the sdc verifier so the sdc verifier uh, was uh, found that uh, in 1998 by the Walter Van der Bos, who is the teacher in the uh, Netherlands Technical University in, in Delft. So uh, <clears throat> this this company starts from the one person, but till now we are growing. We are more than 30 people. So uh, 30 people in the three different offices. This is Ukraine. Netherlands and Poland. So during this time, uh, we're providing the consultancy service. And uh, based on that experience, uh, based on the routine job, based on the boring stuff, which can be omitted, uh, that uh, company decided to develop own software, which called the SDC verifier, and allows the engineers to speed up the engineering process, uh, omit some uh, routine stuff and uh, 
yeah, save your time, which is really uh, important for the engineering projects. Uh, <clears throat> during the this time, we 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 uh, execute more than uh, two uh, two hundred fifty engineering projects uh, with the great feedback from the, our customers. So uh, we still cooperate with them, and uh, yeah, I hope this list will be increased so so far. So uh, also we sold. Uh, our uh, our software developed and uh, yeah it's using around the world so uh, <clears throat> more than inf more, more information about it about the possibility of the license you can check it in the our web uh, website so let's move to the next slide and here you can see the executed verifications uh, by sdc and uh, based on the past 20, 25 years, you, you know that uh, FE calculations extreme extremely developed. So uh, before the manufacturing some products uh, uh, all, or creating design uh, that uh, all engineers try to check the structure uh, with taking into account the FEA analysis uh and yeah it's really right now is mandatory for the steel structures however um, not only the new design is required that that uh, calculation that verifications the older older structures which were uh, manufactured uh, 30 or 50 years ago also can be uh, checked why why is that because we can uh, elongate the process of the operations with the regular maintenance and uh, increase the lifetime of that structure. So uh, not only new uh, structural components can be checked while the older one can be updated, maintained, and uh, we can uh, like do the verification for them as well. So <clears throat> if we go to the next slide, we can see that this is how it looks our own software uh, where we can create the complete geometry uh, using uh, uh, lines, plates, volumes, elements, and after that convert it to the mesh. Uh, yeah, the, the, the mesh in tool, uh, tool models is also integrated here and uh, 1D, 2D, 3D elements uh, can be uh, merged, your geometry can be adjusted and so on. So all this possibility of the preparations uh, modeled before the calculations can be done by the SDC verifier. And uh, basically uh, in the SDC verifier integrated the simulation uh, uh, simulation modulus uh, the solver steam center on a strand which allows you to calculate based on that uh, solver also in SDC integrated library with the standard which allows us to check the uh, our structure not only with the stress level but uh, in accordance into the standard uh, requirements so the next slide is the is related to the EN3001 because this webinar uh, will be focusing on the EN3001 standard. So uh, the simple verification is not enough. We need to stick the uh, standard requirements and uh, EN3001 is, uh, would say, quite new standard in the heavy lift structures. So uh, it's replaced the previously uh, standard uh, FAM1001 NAND standard, which uh, which were uh, published in the 80s. So uh, why it's why it's replaced? Uh, it's replaced since the the previous standards was more focusing on the uh, hand calculations and do not consider the each structural. 
component as as like separately for instance we, we cannot like treat separate weld uh, and check them separately we are focusing on the structure itself so with the sdc uh, with the uh, answer 2001 especially which related to the fatigue verifications uh, there are like um, detailed explanations how to calculate the fatigue with the different uh, notch classes fat classes how it's called in different standard we can assign it different strengths for the welded non-welded part and uh, that's really uh, makes uh, results more reliable and uh, comparable what we have in the reality so that's what 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 we are using for the for the our FEA calculations. So next slide is represent the possible damages during the crane operations. From this slide, you can see that the fatigue, corrosions, plastic deformations, cracks can appear at any locations of your crane, and uh, for sure, sometimes is it is difficult to. Uh, detect but with the FEA calculations it becomes much easier since you can find out what the location of it based on the FEA results so uh, basically I would would like to highlight two uh, more uh, more crucial verification this is static stress check and fatigue check which allows us uh, provide our structure stable uh, and durable during the operation time so we we, we should uh, we should check our structure and uh, yeah make sure that everything is within allowable limit in order to uh, safely operate our crane this is one aspect and uh, the second aspect of the fa calculations that if you would like to uh, receive the precise results uh, uh, of our crane we need to take into account as uh, like a reasonable number of the position of the trolley position of the grab positions yeah depending on what structure do you have so from this screen you see we have position one and position 18 which means that along the boom bridge girder we consider 18 trolley positions which allows us to uh, precisely estimate stress variation at the each locations especially where we have some not connections where we have the uh, water side lag uh, portal connection boom bridge connection land side uh, connections or uh, boom uh, for, forest state connection so this is crucial for the verification as well besides that for each positions uh, or, or I would say might be for the range of the positions we consider the different number of the load cycles and on this top uh, table you can notice that the most loaded position is from the 5 till 10 uh, which uh, makes sense because uh, the unloader or crane operating not at the extreme position of the boom bridge so in this way we will consider the proper number of low cycles with the proper position of the trolley at, at and at the end we will receive the precise results which can be comparable in the reality uh, that's basically not related only for the unloaders or port cranes it can be also executed for the rsc cranes so here from the right side you can also notice that we we include the all the all the possible positions where the trolley can stop or operate in order to estimate the uh, fatigue fatigue uh, delta stress and fatigue level at each position so this is like one aspect of the fea verification which related to the uh, crane crane checks the second one is the uh, level of the detailization so from this screen you can follow that uh, uh, here shown the results of the static stress check and fatigue summation check for the crane structure the top row of this results 
represented by the 1D beam elements. So this is modeled from the beam elements. And uh, if we check that for the beam elements, we receive some uh, local overshoots, peak values at the pylon head. So that's, that locations required to be modeled with the plate elements. Since we would like to explore the stress level, fatigue damage in details for that zone. So what we are going to do, we are going to uh, execute this node with the plate elements and integrate in the global FEA model. So here you can notice the updated results for this pylon head only. And uh, those results at the corners, uh, at the weakest point, I would say, correspond to the results in our beam model. So in this case means that our modeling and our uh, calculations uh, for the beam model, which is uh, not so precise, I would say, is correspond to the detailed model. That means that uh, verifications we take into account as the verifier allows you properly estimate the fatigue and stress level even with the beam beam elements. So let's move on. And uh, here on this slide, uh, uh, this slide represents the possibility of the SDC as a recognition tool, because in order to calculate the fatigue level in our uh, structure, in our welds, first of all, we need to recognize all the welds in our model. So, uh, as you see, this is like powerful tool which allows to recognize not only welds. The welds I will cover in details later on, but uh, let's uh, maybe announce all possible recognitions. So uh, here we, we can see that joint find, uh, joints can be recognized with our joint finder tool, beam member finder, in order to execute beam member check based, for instance, for, uh, on the Eurocode 3 standard, well finder yeah we will cover it later and also plate uh, panel finder in this case we can recognize all the plates panels decks in our ship structure so everything is possible in 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 uh, i would say in, with the short time and uh, with the minimum efforts so how it's look how how we can recognize our welds so this is window from the SDC verifier, just one click and uh, all welds by pressing find will be recognized in your model. Um, yeah, for sure, uh, that's possible predefined the recognitions because there are a lot of options. We can assign the, some portion of our model, uh, but uh, yeah, that's might be more detail for, for, for this webinar. But you can see that all welds are recognized and we can go on. All these welds can be highlighted as it's shown here. Uh, this uh, one highlights just all the welds in our model. Uh, so we can check what welds are recognized here. But this one uh, slide, uh, more informative, I would say, because this slide highlights you the uh, highlight your welds which are uh, like split your welds into welded part and non-welded part which means that non-welded part this is like base material plate and welded part this is plate which is welded directly to this base material plate uh, for what uh, for what purpose we do this this is since the en3001 allows us to predefined the different valve strengths for, for these two different parts. So that's really important because the uh, difference between them approximately 20, 22%, if I'm correct. And uh, that's really crucial for the fatigue verification. So everything is included in the, uh, in this recognitions and the possibility of the assigning valve strengths. Uh, this, left to bottom pictures represent that we can highlight also our welds in different colors so you can check that your weld length is properly defined otherwise we can manually 
updated in the SDC verifier. We can plot with the labels, length, uh, uh, type of belt, and so on. So the possibility of plotting is really extensive list in SDC verifier. And uh, here, uh, what is important to, to mention that, for instance, this is our weld, and this weld uh, treated as uh, like uh, this weld has the two directions, in general, three directions, but here shown just two. X directions means that this is directions along the weld, Y directions means this is perpendicular, and we are going to have the shear. This is yeah, that's probably obvious, but what's important to, to say is that uh, if we recognize our welds, uh, the stresses and forces, internal forces in these elements will be automatically converted in the local coordinate system of the weld from the local coordination, coordinate system, I, I would say even a random coordinate system of the element. So in this case, it allows us directly compare the stress level of the weld with the weld strengths which we are going to define. Because uh, just simple stress we cannot compare uh, in the FEA model since the coordinate system of elements can be random with nearby elements. So that's uh, good to uh, keep in mind if you would like to execute some fatigue verification um, for future. Next one, picture. This is like a uh, picture represent that uh, our welds can be recognized uh, partly for our model. What that means? That means that uh, weld between the flanges of eye shape and webs cannot be recognized if you would like so. So we can define the non welded properties. And between the this non-valid properties, weld wouldn't be recognized. And this is good to have if you consider your uh, if you if you have in your model shape if your model like rolling sections where the weld is not included. So uh, that's about the recognitions and uh, weld weld finders for the fatigue verifications. And the next important things for the executing fatigue verification in accordance to ENSO 2001, this is the load combinations. So from this slide, uh, you can notice that uh, this, the reference from the standard and standard sets, standard says that um, three, three uh, type of the, load combinations for the strength should be integrated. This is regular, regular occasional, and exceptional. Um, the, the, yeah, probably the, the difference between them is obvious for you, but maybe just to refresh your mind so that for the regular, we have the, the higher value of the partial safety factors, which also take into account, with, uh, take into account the dynamic factors. For the occasional, uh, that's basically regular, but with including wind load or uh, snow. Yeah, this this partial safety factor bit, uh, will be slightly lower. And exceptional case, this is unique cases, uh, which happen really rarely. Uh, the partial safety factors uh, are the lowest, and uh, then uh, they also included with the dynamic factors. Besides that, for the particular verifications, uh, we are consider our regular scenario, but we omit our partial safety factor, but just leave the dynamic factors for the lifting, for the movements, and so on. So that's how standard prescribe it. Uh, and these rules uh, for the verification. So basically, this is background of it. And from the left side, here showing the individual loads, load set, and load group. This is standard logic of SDC. So, <clears throat> uh, in order to create the load combinations, you can 
simply use the old school methods uh, using Excel sheet. Probably almost all engineers use it for their own calculations. And here on this bottom pictures, you can see that this is like our uh, load combinations from one to 10. And this one is individual loads, which correspond that numbers. And uh, by the adjusting factors, uh, we can quickly create this load combination and, and in the Excel sheet and copy it to the SDC. So basically how it take a looks, we just can see it. Go to the load sets, create the uh, rows which we would like to and just press Ctrl C, Ctrl V and all those lo load combination are added. To the our uh, to the our uh, project. Uh, okay, so basically we cover the load combination according to EN thirty thousand and one. Next slide. Uh, this slide shows that uh, the the most famous and used uh, standard in the in the world. So uh, basically, you can notice that AAC, Eurocode, DNV, ISO, DIN. Up the answer 2001 VDI, all of them really, uh, really useful for the structural checking, depending on what the branch you would like to. Uh, to yeah, you, you can also notice that here is the more than uh, 400, uh, uh, sorry, 40 standards. And in order to to check all of them, you can easily visit our uh, help. We you can easy, easily visit our uh, website and in details understand what is integrated in as the C verifier. Yeah. So right now we are focusing only on thirty thousand in one standard. And uh, next step is we need to predefine it before the calculation is in the SDC directly. So uh, this is like wizard window, uh, which should be adjusted before the calculations. And here we can, can see the several characteristics which should be implemented. So uh, the first one and uh, which related to the static stress verification is the HAMA SM factor. Uh, this factor represents the material, uh, material uh, grade and material uh, uh, plate thicknesses in your model. So uh, yeah, this is can be adjusted by the engineer. Uh, basically, check all these requirements and put it in the in in, in the SDC verifier. So next one is the gamma MF factor, and this factor basically based on the, uh, I would say, complexity of your structure, and uh, based on the if it uh, if it fail safe or is it, if it non fail safe, if it like uh, hazard for, for person or not. So basically you you need to understand behavior of your structure and you need to uh, like estimate if it accessible to check all this uh, parts so based on this table this factor should be also uh, integrated and uh, like we take into account conservative situation for sure okay so the third aspect of the characteristics, and I would say this is most mostly uh, important. This is well classification, and uh, on this table represents how we are integrate our classification in the SDC verifier. So you can notice that it came from the full model uh, till the all the welds, uh, non welded parts, and so on. So all these numbers correspond to number of the our well classification in the standard maybe a few words about the logic of it so uh, first of all we assign the strengths of our entire material 
uh, basically it required the know what the yield strength so for the steel 355 is 200 then we assign the strength in the shoot directions also for the entire material and then we are like applying the strength for our welds in the different directions but basically based on the uh, um, weld quality so it can be quality c this is like standard quality it can be quality b this is higher and also it can be quality b star that even shown here so that's possible also with sd fire so uh, we can notice along the weld we can assign 140 uh yeah for sure perpendicular strengths of the weld will be uh much lower so for the non-welded part and welded part this is like this location for the non-welded part strength will be 80 and for the welded part directly which welded to the base material will be 63. so uh, with this classification we can uh, i would say precisely assign it and at the end receive the uh, more detailed results compared to the previous standard which were uh, published the next slide this is also related to the to the um, well classification and here we can also notice that um, this is classification for the butt weld since the butt weld is treated as a full penetration weld uh, the the weld quality for the fatigue for sure will be higher than for the normal for the fillet for the single fillet weld and uh, that's obvious also from this sketch you can notice that uh, uh in the x directions of the weld we have quality 140 but at the crossing of the welds where we have the crossing of the our weld at the at the crossing welds we have the the the, the lower quality since this is the, the weakest point in our weld connections because this one weld and this one weld has 140 but if we are going to consider that this element so we can we should treat it as a, a as a not vertical weld while uh, as not as horizontal weld as a vertical weld so it's like change your orientation of the weld change your coordinate system of the weld so this spot should be the weakest and uh, all this uh, intersections can be automatically recognized in as the silver fire and properly predefined it using uh, using uh, notch classes here so after that when we assign this classification we can highlight it we can check it so on this slide you can see that uh, here uh, we can highlight our structural part for uh, like strengths for the structural part uh, with different directions so the first one is the x directions and you can notice that this yellow represented 140 which makes sense at the tip at the crossing of our walls we have the lower wall strength which means 63 because here we have intersections also we can check it in the y and uh, shear directions so these pictures and these pictures represent you uh, possible strengths in different directions too okay that's that's what related to the well classification for plate model but it also good to mention that for the beam model we can uh, we can assign the quite precise well classification as well which shows us the reasonable results because at the beginning of this presentation you saw the comparable results for the beam model and the plate model so here you can see that uh, for the full structure we assigned the well classification 140 which makes sense and consider that we have well along the all the structural parts except the rolling section like uh, Forest stay, backstay, tubes, and so on. And in order to include the 
internal diaphragms which are welded inside which uh, can be treated as perpendicular weld directions we assign the 63 which makes the lower quality so at this stage we can quite precise estimate the fatigue level in the beam model so that's proved by the results um, next slide shows the stander itself uh, here you can notice that this is static stress check window and fatigue summation window. Basically, uh, basically, why I would like to mention it is because uh, this result, this standard, uh, can be easily opened and checked by yourself if you would like to understand the logic of it. Uh, you can also find out the reference about. Uh, certain formulas so here you can see that all the formulas has the reference and uh, yeah otherwise you can check it in the standard so everything is open everything transparency as you see it's not the black box so you can use it uh, for your needs otherwise you can copy the standard create to the custom and use your own code and uh, save uh, for, for your uh, company internally so basically, this is how to perform and how to predefine our uh, uh, how to perform and how to predefine the uh, um, standard verification based on ENS, based on the EN thirty thousand one standard. So basically, after that, when you extract the results, um, just in order to to store your data. Uh, above the model setup, uh, you can highlight it, you can generate it in the report designer. So we have several types of the reports, this model setup, then we can we have the results report when you can highlight all the structural components of your model. Here present the material of the seal, um, separate properties with the cross sections, uh tubes rectangular shapes and so on so like also we can highlight the loads which applied to the model boundary conditions so during the same time you can open this report and understand how this model was set up and uh, uh, yeah it would be clear for you and understandable the next type of uh, report this is results report and uh, the logic basically the same so you can highlight the, your results in the plots, with the plots, uh, with the tables, with the, uh, yeah, the plots can be generated uh, with the different uh, different type that can be displacement, stresses, wealth stresses, uh, yeah, the huge list of the characteristics, as well as the different uh, type of the, uh, of the check. So static stress check, uh, fatigue check and so on. So all this information can be stored, generate, and delivered directly to your client. Okay. So next slide shows that the uh, uh, workflow of the SDC verifier. So basically, this is circle, and uh, it makes really sense to 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 to, to explain you and uh, understand. Uh, what the reason of it so first of all uh, we prepare our fea model we create geometry assign the load boundary conditions and so on then we create the load combination in accordance to the standard requirements then we recognize our structural members uh, based on the uh, recognition tool after that we performing the standard verification and then we can uh, all uh, gather in the documentation chapter in the report designer. So uh, then uh, everything is stored and uh, can be saved. But in any situations when you need to slightly adjust your model, adjust your uh, calculations, update some loads, it's not required all this intermediate step. You just need to adjust your model and after that, press automatically generate the report and it uh, automatically skip these steps, intermediate steps, because 
your model after uh, will be adjusted and uh, mm, automatically uh, automatically uh, updated with with the SDC verifier. By the way, I mentioned uh, I forgot to mention that here we have also the optimization modules, which allows us to optimize our uh, steel structure based on the certain uh, certain requirements that can be uh, the cross section of uh, structure and that can be the thickness of the plates that can be type of the weld size of the weld and uh, also yield limit so basically uh, in order to optimize your structure you can also use the sdc verifier as a tool okay good um, next slide shows that uh, uh, this is our engineering consultancy clients with uh, whom we are working on right now as well yeah and uh, basically we delivered more than uh, 250 uh, engineering projects to them and uh, yeah they really happy with our work and uh, yeah i believe this list will be only expanding so uh, it's good to, to 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 present it to you and hope that our cooperation will be uh, integrated in the nearest future okay so next slide this is something new and something uh, important for the engineering because uh, executing very executing the verification of your structure with the fea is basically and and also like reporting this collect this data is not enough in order to uh, tracking your structure in the time dura durations as well as you would like to uh, elongate the operation process of your structure or, and you don't want to uh, renewing it so basically we still developed and in, like we, we are developed the new product which called sdc sam structural asset management which allows uh, the uh, owner of uh, the the decline of this uh, platform uh, tracking your steel structure your assets uh, um, during some period of time collect the all information about its assets that can be the, the simple reports that can be drawings that can be fa results that can be inspection results so all this possible with this platform so basically here on this slide you can notice that uh, uh, this is general page of the assets and here uh, we can add our assets depending on the terminal we can filter them by the terminal we can assign for the asset different type if it's unloader if it's technical kramer or maybe if it's uh, ship to shore crane so all this manipulation is possible if we press detail we go to the next slide uh, so we can go to the next page and open the uh, more detailed information about these assets here we can see that we can find out on the map what's properly located uh, we can uh, see the general statistic data about the risk level damage type for the assets also as per the sub assets so this is really important to know to estimate uh, your uh, duration uh, your uh, durability of your structure and uh, serviceability and also here you can uh, find out the cruiser inspection data about the structural components so basically this is like general information we can go to the report and here we can upload the informations which directly related to these assets and store it in one place uh, next up this is inspections basically it uh, sub assets uh, in this list represent the sub assets which correspond to this picture which highlighted uh, uh, sub assets here uh, and uh, 
this is basically general information but here we can notice that we have the health status which allows us to understand is it uh, in good condition is fair condition on critical condition so from this list you can grab the general information about the sub asset for instance boom if we go to the details press details we will see the information above the boom here is statistic data about the risk level about the damage type and also uh, boom is split it in the certain locations for instance this one this is boom bridge hinge connection so in this part we can also have the list and we dive deeply about the information per each location we go to the details and we will see the these details these connections uh, has own uh, statistic data with the inspection points uh, with the health status and uh, in general it's at the end result as in the sum uh, level of the uh, of the condition of the structural condition basically if we go to the inspection point one two three we drop down to the more detailed information about this point uh, here uploaded the results from the fea calculations this is automatically done and uh, basically uh, to this inspection point we can also upload the photos during the inspections which may make uh, your life easier and save your time when you do inspection points since all these critical points critical locations will be based on the fea calculations and it will be done up from the inspection so you will uh, yeah you will save your time and do not walk through the all the structural parts while you directly go to the uh, locations inspections point highlighted by the this platform and also it will be integrated as a web version sorry as an app version uh, so with the tablet you can easily uh, like inspect your structure and take a photo directly uh, and upload it to this platform um, the last slide which related to the sam, SAM uh, platform that means that uh, we also consider the different user for this platform that can be inspector engineers admin guests and so on so the the reason of it that we are will cutting out the uh, access for different files for different uh, functionality which makes uh, uh, like poss possibility to share data with uh, with uh, with your colleagues or maybe with your client and uh, for instance if you don't want if you do not do inspections you can share some uh, special data with the inspection company but do not the uh, share but do not allow them, uh, them uh, to do some modifications so this is also really important for the security so basically that's about the sam uh, sdc sam and uh, this is the last slide and i would like to sum up what we covered during this uh, presentation so as the verifier is a company which provide the engineering consultancy service since 1998 you can understand that we have 26 years of the engineering experience we execute the more than um, 250 projects during the last 10 years with the nice feedback from our client and uh, yeah if you need uh, some engineering helps yeah you can contact us as well the second part of our business is the developing uh, our standalone product as the verifier so uh, if you have enough knowledges education about the uh, doing the engineering uh, projects you can you can cooperate with us with the in terms of the software uh, as this is software uh, by the way uh, we we can provide you with the uh, trainings so in three five, uh, four days we can teach you about the main functionality of the sdc verifier and uh, yeah you can do you can do the 
consultancy service by yourself. And the third part is uh, related to the SAMP, uh, which right now is really interesting and uh, convenient way to uh, safely store your data on the on the web version on the cloud and uh, prepare all the data save your time during the inspection uh, and uh, collect everything in one place which really important to the to the to the big companies to the client and in general for the all engineers so basically that's about today's sessions uh, if you have uh, yeah hope this uh, this webinar was useful for you and uh, if you have any question please feel free to, to 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 chat me in the box Are you planning to add the euro code uh, nice code check for aluminium structures uh, yes for sure because uh, we have already developed this code and uh, uh, right now we are at the stage that we are planning to integrate it directly in the sdc so the the basic stuff already done about the euro code 9. Okay, so I don't see any question from your side. I believe this was uh, really useful and interesting for you. You grab some information for yourself and please contact us uh, by the uh, support email or in, in case some extra questions and cooperations. Thank you for your attention.